the uh, phone call coming and uh, going? Uh, I'm supposed to be called about an appointment? Well, mm-hmm. within 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I find out, oh, we never would have called you. I'm like, what? You, yeah. You know, I'm like, you know, you know, I go, in January, I called you guys, and you guys kind of, you know, blew my hair back on the phone and told me that I have to wait for you to contact me. Mm-hmm. The site, you know, we'll go to lunch. And I, I go, and you guys drop it? We go, yeah, well, sorry. I go, this is But like, that's mm-hmm. malpractice. You know, if you ask me. That's if I had, like, you know, it was different from the day you went. It sounds like you just told me this. Oh, yeah, I, I think I elaborated on that a few days ago, yeah. But, but I'm, I was thinking about it over the last couple of days, and I go, it's not. Like, like, what if they do imaging this June 2nd, and I do get around to the point, and they, and they find out that I have some sort of tumors or something, that, that it's like beyond an operable, or, you know, that I go, oh, and, and so I have fallen out of the system, you know, this is like, you know, I should be able to do that, you yeah. know, I, mean, I, I think so. I think you have a good face, too. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, they would deny the whole thing. They sent me a letter, though. They did send me a letter and I got it in my bag and it's an apology letter. It's like, we're sorry, we're glad you brought this to our attention. We're sorry that this happened and you had concerns about our you know, system and so on and we are taking measures to correct the problem and so on. And if you have any further issues, you know, please bring it to our attention. Here's our number, my name. And uh, once again, uh, sorry to have heard and blah, blah. And I have the letter in my bag. Keep it. Oh, don't yeah. use it. Take yeah. copies of it. Yeah. Yeah. So what can be invaluable? Really. You, know, you know one of the things about AA is, really good, I think, is the level of selfishness, self candidate Like they only, in a very, very serious way, the universe revolves around them. They don't see themselves as a player in the universe where they are just among others. Mm-hmm. They very centrally, everything has to revolve around them. And you know, my ex client, that client is now dead, was exactly like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he got in the program, he, he, he just mixed right with the program, and it was just like it was a gel right there. It was it was a uh, it was a it was a, a given right right off the bat. What would he do? What would Brian do that was driving nuts? Well, here's a really, really good one. You know, like, we used to watch TV. And he'd be over there, and that's the one after me, and so on. And I'd be like, he'd be like, oh, watch TV. He'd be like, you know, why? And I'd go, what are you trying to do, brother? Oh, you know why? I'll put the brains out in a little while. I'll shut the fuck up. And then he'd be like, and a commercial would come along. And he'd be over there, and I'd be like, and he'd go, he goes, you know, it's a commercial. I go, it's a Jeep commercial. I love these cars. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, I gotta watch this commercial. This is good. I go, watch this Jeep go through the air. <laughs> he goes, you couldn't take the meeting there? Is that what you didn't like? I, it, it was, it, I was being mobbed all the time. I was like, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. uh-huh. about driving a car, we'd be that now, you know? And, and he was just constantly at it. Yeah. And then, and then it, would, it would go into other dimensions. Like he, one time he was just on to go, it's a Sunday, or whatever it was. And he goes, oh, buy me a, d- a couple of donuts and a cup of coffee. I don't have money for a couple of donuts and a cup of coffee. I go, we smoked and drank all our money last night. <laughs> I go, I only have enough money to do lunch this week at work. And uh, I go, uh, so I'm not going to be able to uh, support yeah. other shit. Right. And he goes, oh, so we'll be driving around town, and a little while later, we stop somewhere, and I get like a coat. Oh. All right, you too. And so then, uh, waiter. Oh, his name's Juan. Juan. Uh, hi, Juan. Can I have a, a box of that? Sure. Thank you. So anyway, so then I bought myself like uh, a copy later on, and he goes, I thought you didn't have any money. I go, for you? <laughs> I go, I mean, like, for you? I go, I have like $15 last week for Coke and stuff at work, you know, and this is a Coke for today for me, you know. Thank you. And he goes, you lied to me. You said you didn't have any. You were, you couldn't lend me five dollars. <laughs> and he goes, now you're buying yourself clothes. And I go, 
If you like. Then we went to a restaurant one time. Wow. And we all eat. And then the bill comes to the table. And I had my money for my portion of the tab. And then these other two guys, uh, Blaine and it was a friend of <laughs> Brian. Brian and Blaine are sitting there and they have no money. So I bought like $14 of food and I have $16. <coughs> and I go, what the fuck are we going to do? And they go, we thought you were paying more. And I go, where'd you get that idea? I go, I got my money for my food. I go, you guys are going to have to wait. They had no money for their food. And the waitress comes over, and I had to take her aside and explain to them. I go, these doofuses over here have no money. I just found out. And I go, I made sure I had my money for what I wanted. Right. And I go, here's my, you know, my tab was $12. Here's $16. I go, I go, you should consider the other money, your tip, whatever. I go, but those guys are walking on their bill. They have no money. They're, they're claiming that they felt I was paying. Right. Like, I never agreed to pay their bill. And she was so pathetic. And she, she didn't say a word. She goes, ah. Oh. Right. So we ended up leaving there. And then on the way home, we got rid of Blaine. And we're driving home to my house, and I ended up in a fist fight with Brian in my parking lot. He wasn't really striking back. But we, we got into a, I, I got bullshit at him. Because I, uh, we were going over how this occurred. And he was claiming that I had let on that I was going to pick up the tab. And uh, and I turned around and, and he was being blatantly, blatantly lopsided in his argument. So I got so furious about it because of the, just the, 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 the stone cold blatantness about it. But I grabbed his leather coat in the parking lot and I turned him around. And it had one of those straps on the shoulders. And I tore it. One part off the, the, the jacket. And then I like go and go, look what you did, you wrecked my coat and everything. And I go, I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> this went on and on and on. Then another time he he he, he used moose out to having this uh, pop on kind of thing. One time he comes back around and he's warming up to me and I go, don't move your stuff in. You're not moving anymore. He would move out and move back in. Uh, he would move around, he moved back, and he would do all kinds of shit. Like, for the first time that he moved out, he dropped one of my rings, a gold ring with diamonds in it, down a pipe in the bathroom sink. You know, down that little uh, yeah. head, head yeah. thing. And he goes, oh, and I, I swear he threw it down there. He goes, oh, dropped your ring down there. He goes, I don't know how to get it out. And I go, well, you're going to get it out. And so he takes the pipe apart and gives me my ring back, and which was made me happy. And then I go, okay. I think it was his ring, actually. But then he turns around and the pipe's busted. And I go, you're not moving all your stuff out of here until you fix that pipe. I had to go to work that day. I came home. All the stuff was gone. Pipe was broken. He goes, hey, he lets me know, I'll be back down. Never came back down. Never came I had to get the landlord, manager, the building manager to come up and fix the pipe. Did they charge the board? No, no. The guy goes, well, oh, whatever, you know. He goes, it's a small thing. Then he comes back around, uh, warming up to me again. And I go, you're not fully moving in. And I go, you can bring a couple pieces of clothing, you know, some shaving, you know, whatever. You know, kind of like some toiletry other sundry items. But I go, keep it in like the laundry basket next to the bed so that you're an easy tote and out when it's time to fight. <laughs> and so then, you know what happens? One night we have Keep this, your stuff in the car. Yeah. Well, no, I just wanted to be able to go, here, get out, get out. And so then one night we're having a fight and I go, there's your basket, get it out of here. Or I'm calling the cops. Well, I actually, didn't start that way. He goes, I'm not taking leaving. I go, yeah, you are. He goes, no, I'm not. I go, he goes, I'm not leaving. I go, I'm call the police. He goes, I'm not leaving. So I, I go, oh, yeah? And I went over there and grabbed the basket. This is classic. This is like Lawrence's life. I opened the front door, and at that time, there were fire trucks going down the street. And I threw everything in front of the fire trucks, and I'm thinking, like, crunch, 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 crunch. You know, all these tapes out in John. <laughs> His, his bathroom flying, his pillow flying, his, everything's flying left and right. And then I'm standing, he goes, I can't believe you that out the street. And I go, oh, you're out of the house, get back. And I'm inside and I close the door. And then the landlord manager comes over, knocks on my door, and he goes, do you know anything about that stuff out here? Because your friend's running around the street because I stuff up. And I go, I got no idea what's going on. I go, he has nothing to do with it. 
and I closed the door and locked it. I kind of felt bad though. 